Hi everyone, Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com coming at you with a four box break of 2022-23 Bowman University, University Chrome Basketball. It's a mouthful there. This is random letter break number 46. We're going by the first letter of their first name as you've seen. To NBA draft night, ladies and gentlemen. If you're in the YouTube stream, vote in our poll. Who is selected at number two in the NBA draft night? Is it gonna be Brandon Miller or is it gonna be Scoot Henderson? Vote and discuss in the chat. There's all the letters right there. Now, we're also giving away four extra spots within this break. So we only sold 13 spots outright. We're going to randomize those 13 names, 13 spots. Top four, we'll get extra spots after seven. Three and a four, seven times. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seventh and final time. We got Nathan, Daniel, James, and Daniel. Congrats to you. Extra spots going your way. It's like a little uh, buy one, get one opportunity here. You put those rooftops next to your name so you know those are your winning spots. Now let's randomize you a letter. Let's roll it and randomize it. Five and a five, 10 the hard way. And 10. James down to Daniel after 10, the hard way. Five and a five. 10 times for the letters. One, two, and 10th and final time. Ooh. Victor Wenbanyama on top, James. Look at that. Fresh case as well. Fingers crossed, man. Daniel, you've got C, Caitlin Clarks. S and J for you, Daniel. Nathan with B, Matthew with P, Nathan with EG, Daniel with DK, Nathan with NO, James with A, Rosario with F, Matthew with T, Nathan LH, James with M, Last Spot Mojo, Nathan with WZ, and Daniel with R. Let's order these alphabetically. I don't think there's gonna be a trade. Trades are kind of rare in these letter breaks, traditionally, but while you're thinking about it, pop open this fresh case. Actually, let's take this out of my inventory system first. A little college baseball on the background. The winner of this game will move on to the final series. All right, so it's out of my inventory system. Let's pop this case over here and then we'll roll a live die and we'll see which uh, which four boxes we're gonna do. Oh, James is gonna pitch a trade here. Maybe S for A. He wants to trade his A for Daniel's S. Um, so that would be Scoot versus uh, a number of A's. Anthony Black, I think, is going to be one of the big names for letter A. All right, so took, took two off the top of each of these to create another four right here. On the dice roll, we'll go one, two, three, four, five, six. Four. One, two, three, four. So we're going to do that middle column there. These we'll save for next time. No trades, right? No, I think we're going to roll, James. TWC trade window close. And now let's see what we have inside. The next four, did I load up the next four boxes? The next four boxes in the store right now. Today's a good day to get after this Bowman University stuff. And again, you can vote in our poll. Uh, it looks like our poll is pretty split at the moment. It's in our YouTube chat. We all know that 99.9% .9 chance that uh, that it's Victor Wenbanyama going number one to the 
um, the San Antonio Spurs. The Hornets have the number two overall pick. I suppose they could trade out of it. But either way, who is selected at number two in the NBA draft tonight, which is currently, the pick is currently with Charlotte. Is it going to be Alabama's Brandon Miller? Or is it going to be the G League Scoot Henderson? The poll is split 50-50. Break the tie. Someone. Steven, what's going on? I'm doing well. NBA draft night. Let's see what the Lakers do tonight. Hope springs eternal in these. Every one of these players can become Hall of Famers before draft, before they're drafted, after they're drafted, who knows. You hear on, the, hear on Chicago radio that Zach Levine is going to be a New York Nick for Mitchell Robinson, R.J. Barrett, and someone else. Someone, I, I read somewhere that's, that, that tonight might be a pretty active trade night, more than any other night in NBA draft history. There was Marcus Smart, Porzingis were moved around. The, the Wizards ended up sending KCP, KCP, CP3 to the Warriors for Jordan Poole. So, the, I mean, Wizards are completely rebuilding. Middleton's declining his option will become a free agent. I mean, all sorts of, a lot of people in LA radio saying that the Lakers are going to trade up, trade down, or trade for someone who can help them now, but still stay young, younger. Here's Juju Watkins, 007 out of 299. That's going to be for the letter J. Oh, did I not print out this list? I should probably print out this list. Letter J is for Daniel. I think Derek Lively's draft stock is rising. There's Brandon Miller. He'll be the second overall pick. It's Jordan Hawkins, I think, will should be drafted at some point in the first round. It's Keegan's twin brother, Chris Murray. And here's our first autograph. Syracuse's Judah Mintz. I think I've seen him in some mock drafts. First or second round pick. That's going to be for Daniel in the letter J. This is where I, I, I don't follow college too closely during the season, but... <laughs> Draft time is usually where, I, where I'll like do like a crash course, try to learn some things about some of these players. All right, so here is the official printout, by the way. Here on a Thursday, break 46, next four box break in the store right now. And we got a gold shimmer, Brandon Miller. That's a nice time to get this. The night of the draft, Nathan with the letter B for Brandon. 17 out of 50. Nice. Chad Howard, Jawan Sun should be a mid first round pick. There's Jalen Bridges. Daniel with the letter J. Twenty two out of twenty five. Of the orange parallels, they pop nicely. Grady Dick should be a first round pick. We just saw Grady Dick on TV with a red sequin jacket. I didn't see the pants. And a Red sequin, turtleneck, tank top. Shades, chain. <laughs> I, I thought the, the sequin turtleneck tank top was a little, little much. I feel like you needed some contrast, maybe something flat black underneath, maybe like a cashmere. With a red sequin on red sequin. A little too matchy-matchy for my tastes. Jacket was pretty cool, though. 
Steven says, what do you think it would take for a last track and trade for the Spurs to trade out of that? How much would they have to give up if they're taking phone calls? I mean, it would never happen. You would have to give up so much. You would have to get a comment. Probably multiple teams would have to be involved that would send multiple young up-and-coming stars to put on that team. And we're talking superstars and future superstars. I mean, this is like... Like Luka Doncic. You know, I mean, I don't know if Dallas would ever do that, but or maybe they would. I, that would that would kind of be crazy if Dallas is thinking we're never going to be able to give Luka Doncic another contract. We're having a hard time building around him. You know, the only way Dallas fans would allow Luka Doncic to leave if you're getting another sort of bona fide future star in return. You know, they have a history of European big men being on that team. And building around that. It'd be Luka Doncic plus a couple other starters on that team. Plus future picks. You know, and maybe San Antonio would send some player, would send like a, a fringe player the other way. But I think it kind of starts there. We got Armando Baycott for James. Two thirty-three out of four ninety-nine. But I can't see the Spurs doing that. I can't see, you know, because yeah, essentially you're kind of announcing a rebuild in a way. I mean, you are announcing a rebuild. You're getting a a you know a player who hasn't played a single minute in the NBA. There's another Armando Baycott, 007 out of 399 for James in the letter A. And I think it kind of starts there. We got Ernest Uda Jr., letter E, and that's going to be for Nathan, letter E. Roddy Gale Jr., 152 out of 199 for Daniel in the letter R. All right, two more boxes to go. I think the Spurs would even take picks now that they think about it, if that was the case. There would have to be a third team involved and I don't know, when three teams trade trades happen, then I I can't my brain does is, is not capable of handling three teams in a trade. But you would somehow have to get I don't I don't know, like what Kind of looking down because you want you want you don't want older players you want younger players future stars. I mean, I, mean, I think it would have to be what in this college baseball game? Yeah, I, I have no idea. Probably LSU, the underdog. Or the five seed. I think Wake Forest is supposed to be like they're just amazing. They're supposed to roll through everybody. They lost yesterday to somebody. I think maybe. Oh, somebody, right? It's like double eliminated. Double eliminated. 
Angels are bad. Yeah. Dodgers got lucky. <laughs> they have not been playing well. Yeah, I mean, I don't even know where you can set a framework of a trade for that. I mean, you would have to start with someone like, you know, with someone like uh, Luka Doncic or a player of that caliber, like still that young, but an obvious superstar in the league, something like that. All right, next box. We got a Khalif Battle. 007 out of 150 pink uh, mini diamonds. There's Jaden Shoot, Purple Shimmer. And we got a Jalen Wilson. 238 out of 499. Wilson! Wilson! That's going to go to uh, Daniel in the letter J. It's Lauren Betts. So we'll save a base Brandon Miller for Nathan as well. Possible number two overall pick. Armando Baycott, purple to 399. And Cam Whitmore is supposed to be drafted in the first round. And there's Mike Miles from TCU. Mike is going to go to James. And who's going to split the tie? Who is selected number two in the NBA draft? Vote in our uh, in our YouTube poll. We're stuck at 50-50 on Brandon Miller and Scoot Henderson. Should I have done another? Maybe I should have done another. Bad bad poll work by me. My college uh, stats professors will not be happy with what I just did. Um, although. Doubt, I mean, other. I guess another question would be, I mean, it's pretty unlikely the Spurs are going to trade the top pick, but are the Hornets going to trade the second pick? Doubtful, right? But I think uh, Hornets GM Mitch Kupchak former Lakers GM, Mitch Kupchak was saying that he was thinking that uh, he would entertain offers, but did not anticipate getting like a, a phone call an hour before the draft or anything like that. If a deal was going to happen, probably would have happened by this morning, which I don't think, I don't think anything's really happened, right? Except for Chris Paul to the Warriors for Jordan Poole. That's a good deal. Does that mean Draymond is coming back? Possible. You gotta refresh that team a little bit. We, we heard about the smart Porzingis deal. So what happens to Brogdon now? Originally he was supposed to go to the Clippers. And now that's not happening anymore. You know, so does that, you know, does Brogdon, is he, is he butthurt? You know, is he, uh, or is he mature enough to be like, hey, this is the business. What would, sh what, what is Charlotte, why would Charlotte move the second pick, I guess? What's their motivation? Let's take a look at their depth chart. If they think they could get some instant talent on board to pair with, well, I guess that would be the reason. Right? I don't know. LaMelo can't have more than a couple years left in, on his deal. There is, you know, you got to maybe try to build a team that tells you, hey, we're trying to build a winner. We're trying to build around you, LaMelo. 
we want you to stay. We want you to try to get us deep playoff runs here. Otherwise, he may walk. He may, he may be a free agent, go to the Lakers or something like that, you know? But they've got Terry Rozier on that team. Kelly Oubre Jr., Gordon Hayward, P.J. Washington, Mark Williams, you know, guys like that. Who can they add with the second pick? Here's Judah Mintz, 23 out of 99. Letter J, that'll be for Daniel. Yeah, a lot of interesting moves, you know, and a lot of deals could happen still just leading up. We're about, what, 30, 30 minutes to an hour away from the draft? There's a Dewan Harris Jr., 9 out of 99. That'll be for Daniel, letter D. We got Nick Smith Jr. Is he supposed? I think he might be a first round pick, right? Letter N, Nathan. I think I've seen his name in some mock drafts here and there. My Lakers thinking about, I've heard some rumblings. They may trade up, they may trade down, they may trade out and try to get some current player. Lakers front off is a little hit or miss, but sometimes they, uh, but, but what I do am confident about is their ability to identify talent. Remember Austin Reeves was an undrafted player. Alex Caruso was a second round player. Kyle Kuzma was late first round. So they're, they're able to identify talent pretty well. They're shade and shoot gold shimmer, 13 out of 50. So I think their team is pretty confident that even if they even if they trade back, that they can still find and identify talent that could be, you know, a rotational player or even a starter within a year or two. There's some guys last year, like Max Christie, Scottie Pippen Jr., you know, those, those guys, if they think they're, they're ready to contribute now, you know, they know those players better than anybody. They might, uh, they might trade out, get some current players. A lot of things can happen. Stick with us. Discuss the NBA draft and break some basketball with us all night long. JaspiesCaseBreaks.com. I'm Joe. I'll see you next time for the next break. Bye-bye.